Hey team, so let me just go over in a nutshell. This is just kind of re-recorded this really quick what I talked with Kenny about last night. And so one of the issues that he had was taking radiographs and when you did a shift, so if you can see here, the, the tooth would be off the, off the sensor. So one way you can mitigate that issue is by moving the sensor. So if, for example, you put your sensor in the middle of the, of the ring, you can move the sensor a little bit more mesial. And what that does is then when you shift it, it allows the, the tooth to be shifted to be caught, captured on the radiograph. Now, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with these types of uh, rins, these are for doing endo, but more specifically when you have a file in the tooth, it's really helpful. And let's just set it up properly. So these are really helpful. Um, what I've what I've been using for years now are just a regular RIN, and I talked to Kenny, he had a question like, how do you deal with shallow palates? So what we'll do is we'll show you a few x-rays just with, with each. So if you're not familiar with these and you wanna try these, they're great for, especially when you have files in the tooth. So let's pretend there's a rubber dam here. What I'm gonna do is we'll take a radiograph of, of the first upper right molar. We have a rubber dam on, and I'm just doing this so it's a little bit clearer. When you use these, Wow, I've got it really not set up here. Six o'clock in the morning. Okay, so we're just doing this one take. <laughs> All right, so I've got it set up here. We're going to place this where, with our, where our rubber dam clamp is. And the way that this works is that it captures. You need to bring it in and then kind of capture behind because the rubber dam's in the way. So you're going to try to bring the rubber dam forward. And then if you're having a difficulty, then you can see my... My indicator is really the back of the clamp. So he, Mr. Dexter doesn't really have any type of, he's got a really hard palate. So we're gonna get him to bite down just like this. And then we're gonna imagine there's some clamps in there. And then we're gonna talk about a distal shift right now. So if we go straight on, so there's a regular straight on. So let's see if we've gotten it. Okay, there's a straight on. You can see already that the tooth is shifted a bit because in a distal shift, the way, the easy way that I figured it out, well, not figured, yeah, I've kind of been doing this a while. I finally figured it out was, that's just by struggle, that statement, is that the distal buccal root is lined up over the palatal root. So you can tell, then what that helps us to do is when we have a distal buccal shift, we're able to see where our files are in the mesial buccal uh, root. So if the tooth was, so if I'm going to do a shift shot, you know, the, the tooth is a little bit more mesial. So I was, what I might do is just bring that sensor a little bit more forward if I can, and then we'll do our shift. Now a shift is, a shift you can do, you know, just literally kind of shifting at 30 degrees. What I like to do, and you'll see with the, uh, the other, with the other rim, the yellow rim, I'm going to bring it up at an angle like this. So there's my angle there. If you can grab that, I'm gonna rotate him around. It's kind of like that. So let's just grab it. So I'm still kind of tipping distal, but I'm also tipping a little bit more uh, in, uh, superior. And the post, the part, the most distal, um, further posterior, that's the word I'm looking for, part has to be kind of off the rim. So there's a great example of what not to do. <laughs> the shift, we've definitely shifted it much more mesial because there's a palate and our distal, and there's our distal buccal root, and then there's our buccal root. Now, would this be enough during a shift shot or during cone fitting? Like, yeah, it might be. But let's move that file, the film, just a little bit more mesial. We'll do the same shot. I'm not going to shift it as much. but I'm still coming down at an angle. And what that helps to do is to make sure you don't cone cut. Because I think a lot of the experience, and especially my own experience, is just missing the tip. There we go. So if we were to see, you know, we barely got the palate, but you can see we've got more of the, you know, we've got way more of a distal shift because our distal buccal root is way further forward, mesial than the palate. But we definitely got more of a shift of that root. So that's a distal shift. And it'd be the same thing. So I don't really use mesial shifts. They're kind of, I don't find them useful because 
The main root you're trying to find in especially maxillary teeth is the mesiobulcal root and you might as well distal shift to see that. And in lower teeth, the mandibular teeth, let's just reset this. Actually, what we'll do is in mandibular teeth, the main thing you're trying to look for is your mesiobuccal root. There's your mesial root. All right, so. Let's set this up like this. So same thing, I would do the same thing. And actually what I wanted to talk about quick with the, while well, our clamp is on that upper tooth, is just still, you know, we're going to be using, this is what I'll do for my cone fit still, is, not still, this is what I do for a cone fit. I'm about to do a cone fit in about uh, two hours. So when I have a case like this, we'll just stick on that actually. When I have a maxillary case, and this is just literally from years of struggle. That's, and learning little tips here and there. So what I'm going to do is this is, you know, kind of that angle bisecting technique, but I can't, it's really hard to do this technique with files in the tooth. It's almost impossible because the files bend all over the place. But if you're doing gutter kerchief points, that's pretty straightforward. So if I'm going to take my, this will be my cone fit radiograph. So the, I've been doing this a few times now and it, the stickiness is leaving this. Okay, so let's just do that. All right, so there, this is my cone fit radiograph, all right? <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm automatically, because it, I know that if I do this, I'm gonna miss the apical portions of the root. I'm gonna come up already in an angle, and then I'm gonna distal shift it just again. So if we see this, hopefully I get it. Otherwise, it's another epic fail. Epic fail. Okay, so what did we do wrong? Well, we have the tooth weight, or the, the tooth is much more mesial on the radiograph. So let's just move our radiograph up a little bit more. And there we go there. There. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. And let's not shift it as much. Let's try this. You can see that I'm happy, you know, we're gonna foreshorten the roots. That's just gonna happen. But, well, let's just see what happens. There we go. So, <clears throat> if you rerun re back through the, if you wanna see the angle, so we've the key, what I did there was I moved, I moved it forward. I moved the sensor forward, so I can get more of that distal shift. We do have a distal shift. Memory, in the back of my mind, the tooth is shift already. Uh, rotated but that angle coming down yeah the tooth is gonna be foreshortened but I'm able to see the APC of that root and which is typically what I want to see when I have a cone fit anyways all right so there's that and let's just do a mandibular tooth so let's reset this real quick okay so same thing here we're going to pretend that there's a uh, we're going to need to pretend it's See if I have my. I'll do it for real. So this tooth has been root canal by someone. All right. So we're gonna pretend that this is a cone fit radiograph, and it's gonna be real because the rubber dam clamp is gonna move all over the place. All right. So let's just place this down here. place it a little more mesial because we are going for the distal shift. Now, do I distal shift all the time during my cone fit? Not really. All right, so let's do this. <clears throat> all right, so if I do a straight on, we're going to miss the root apices because the, the clamp is in the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come at a distal angle, kind of like this. And let's just see what happens. All right, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, we're gonna get it. Boom. 
So distal shift, so same side lingual, opposite side buckle. So mesial lingual, mesial buckle. And again, the, the angulation on that, actually Kenny, if you're watching this, is kind of funny because this tooth is a little bit rotated, but we definitely split it a little more. So the angulation I'm gonna do normally on my distal, on the mandibular teeth is gonna be from you know inferior up at an angle and perhaps it's the bisecting angle technique. I'm not too familiar with that. I just know how to, I've tried to study that and it doesn't make any sense. But if I, I know that if I just do this with that sensor, well, let's just see here. Now, hopefully I cut off the roots, the apices. So I'll get a cone cut. I should only see about, oh, I got it. Look at that. Can't believe it. But you can see, oh, look at that. Oh, I learned something today, but <laughs> in real life, it seems like I'll always get a cone cut. So I'm going to come a little bit more inferior and to get that distal shift. So that's straight on. We don't really get a split. And again, let's just do it one more time. We'll try a different angle so you can kind of see it. And that's kind of what I talked with. And actually the other part, so just to review with Kenny, what we talked about is coming so in superior and kind of distal, so you can see there's that split. And that's kind of what I like to see during our cone fit, that we, yeah, we have two separate canals or the confluent, doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see the whole portion of the apical part and we've got our split, so we're good. Now what, so in a, in a nutshell, what happens is for max ray teeth, we're gonna come superiorly and distally, superiorly and distally to get that distal shift and inferiorly and distally on, or posteriorly on mandibular teeth. Now, I think the biggest thing you can do, so is to move the, you know, just moving the sensor forward. Now, there's obviously there's times when you can't use the rent. It just is ineffective. And I found that we were practicing yesterday with one of my other dentists and it's kind of premolar areas. Those are really hard to get even just radiographs because of the palate. So sometimes you have to go with a, with an individual and get it angled, you know, fairly crazy. And you may get the patient, you may have to have the patient to hold it in the sense that, so you can capture that information. Let's just try this, I'm not gonna get too crazy. So what I may do is have the patient come with their opposite thumb and then, but this becomes kind of more of a guessing game, especially when there's a rubber dam and, and uh, Frame, uh, not frame, but rubber dam in the way. Um, so I'm just gonna see if I can shift this. This one may not work. This uh, tooth number one five. But the palate really pre prevents, he's got a really super shallow palate. Yeah, you can see there. So we, we did get a, sh we got a little bit of, sh so this tooth is already rotated. We didn't get much of a shift on this, but I got the apice. Um, but his palate is fairly shut. He doesn't have much of a palate, it's burned off, but his palate is so shallow, it's really tough. So you will have to essentially kind of get the patient to hold it. And then even for distal shift, whew, it's gonna be a little more complicated. Let's see if we can get it like this. We'll hold it kind of like that. This is the last dose of x-ray. I did it a few yesterday, a few today, and I think I'm good. Anyway, so that was kind of what we talked about. And yeah, see, I missed it. So it's really complicated to get that. You're gonna have to fiddle around and just, you know, just so you know that you're not alone, that premolars are really tough to get uh, radiographs on. Anyways, that's pretty much what we talked about. That's in a nutshell, and then, uh, let me know uh, if this. Let me know if this is helpful. And uh, thanks so much for joining me on this course. I'm super grateful you're here. We'll talk to you soon.